Hello, John here again, and welcome to another episode. Now, this is going to be different. As you can see, I've got Linux Ubuntu running. And so, as you probably guess, it's going to be a Linux episode. And you would be right. So, I've just created this brand spanking new Linux machine. Just to show you. If I do sudo at uh, is it update like that? Shouldn't be much because I've just in yep yeah. done. So and. Uh, what we're going to do here is uh, one of my one of the viewers um, just recently got in touch with me and said that they're running Linux and got CBM PRG Studio running on it. So I invited him to the forum and asked him to document what he'd done. So here it is in all its glory. So we're going to run through this to see if we can do the same. So it's going to take some time, but it, in essence, there's not that many steps. So I've got a Linux machine and he is on about to uh, make sure it's up to date and all that. And that we need to install wine. Now he said that the wine that you get out of the um, repository is out of date and it didn't work for him. So he said I, it, to get the latest version from WikiHQ. And I thought, okay, we can do that. So here's the instructions. So we're going to copy the instructions one at a time and we're going to basically see if we can get CBM Studio running on a Linux machine. So here we go. So we'll start here. So we're going to copy that. And all these instructions are on the forum. And I will paste them in the text down below. Let's make sure my virtual machine can access my clipboard. Here we go. And basically, we're just going to install all these steps. So I presume this is going to install something that's not there. Right, so that's done. So let's, what's the next step? So the next step is to do this. Okay, I have no idea what these instructions are doing, but I'm going to copy them. Then is to do this. So I presume we're getting some sort of key. And that's done. We're doing all right so far. Then we're doing this. So I presume this is adding another repo to the, uh, the package list. Yep. And then we are doing this. So this is installing wine. Now this may take a while, so I will speed it up for you. Right then, so that's installed. Now he gets it gets into a little bit of uh, things. So we've got to install this wine trick. So we need to CD into downloads. So there shouldn't be anything in there. There isn't. And then we need to copy that link and do wget. So wget, paste the link in. Press enter. 
Right, that's done that. And then it's got to change it to be an executable, I think that is. Right, so we should have an executable, which we do. And then it's that. And this is going to now start up some configuration and install some bits. Now, he's in the article, it clearly states here, do not install mono. So, <laughs> we're not going to. So we're gonna say cancel to that. This is Gecko, so we're gonna install that. So this is gonna take a little bit more time, so I'm gonna speed it up for you. So, we have got a few steps to do in here. And so what he was, what he's put in here is, right, we need to create a new win pre, a wine prefix and select 32 from the drop down. So, okay, so we're gonna do that. So back in here, we're gonna create a new wine prefix going to select 32 and we'll call it 32 bit apps uh, so no okay no we don't want to install that so now in the article Raven, aka Sean, has gone and said that we now to do install Windows DLL components. And then to install the .NET 462. So let's do that. So we're in the 32-bit apps profile. So we're gonna install Windows DLL. So we click that, click OK. Scroll down to .NET 462. Click that, click OK. And it's now gonna download all the .NET. So it's gonna download .NET 462, 461, 46, uh, 45, and then four. So I'll, see, it's, ask, it's letting us know Mono is not installed, which we know, because we're not allowed to install it. So I'm going to let it run through it. So now it's downloading 461. I think at 4, it has a bit of a fit and we have to install something. So Mono, again, okay, we're not going to install it. So this should be 46, yes it is. Yeah, I know it's not installed and we're not going to install it. And this is it. So it says, cannot find the cab extract, please install. So we're going to copy this. So it's sudo at get install cab extract. I'm going to copy that, click OK, and then paste it in there. Miss the S. Here we go. Which takes literally two seconds, three seconds. Maybe four. There we go. And we'll go back into the wine tricks. Right, as you can see, we're not in the 32 bit. So we have to select 32 bit apps. Click OK. And now we're in the 30 bit. So we need to do it again. So we're going to select .NET 462 but this time because it's already got the packages it's going to skip through it so it's doing no it's not doing the 462 it's going to complain about mono now it's doing 461 but it knows it's got it it's going to complain about mono then it's going to do 46 which it's already got complain about mono now it should download 45 there you go 
and of course it's going to complain about mono see now it's going to download four and it's saying .NET is not fully working with the wine which we're fine about because CVM Pro Studio doesn't work it's uh, not a .NET 4 app it's a .NET 6 4 6 I think and it's going to complain about mono again now it's going to reverse install all the .NETs so it's going to start with .NET 4 and it's going to then do .NET 5 4 5 4 6 4 6 1 4 6 2 now this is going to take a while so when you're doing it if you're planning to have a cup of tea have it now but i'm going to speed this up for you so you goes you guys don't have to uh put up with the uh waiting i'll see you on the other side Right, as you could see, it crashed, so I had to start it again. But as you can see now, it's continuing. So it's now done four. It's now going to install four, five. Hopefully. And this time it's going to go through without a hitch. That's the only problem is you've got to give it, you've got to give it plenty of time to sort itself out. That's all right. Yes, we do. And away you go. Now, you know it's working because it's constantly error in the background, but ignore the errors. It's it's installing OK. It's just it can't find some Windows Windows components that you it would expect to be there. But I wouldn't worry too much about it. As long as it carries on going through and installing, we should be fine. Right, I'll speed it up for you so you can uh, see you on the other side. Right, that's all the .NETs installed. So I'm going to come out of this. And we're going to install Vice. So it's sudo apt install Vice. Yes, please. Get that installed. Shouldn't take too long. Right, what we need to do now is we need to get the ROMs for Vice because this won't work without the ROMs. So let's go onto the Vice website and see if we can grab them. Right, Vice. Uh, we'll download download we'll download the source there it is so we'll download the source here we go so we'll save the file looks like it's done We'll close that down, go into File Explorer, and we need to copy the ROMs. So we'll extract that to here. We'll go in there, and we'll go into there, create a terminal, and we'll do what we did before, which is this. So this is saying copy downloads vice, but this is vice 3.4 now and data and put it in the users. So let it do it. Sorted. Right now 
we should be able from here to go x64 and it should load vice up boom there we go right so if we go back to um, the article in my forum he says then go to Arthur's website so let's go to Arthur's website and download the software so we'll start Firefox again AJ gordison.co.uk download 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 save the file So I think, no, it says it's still still doing. No, nope, it's finished. Right. We're going to the download directory. Get rid of all that because we don't need it. Unzip it. There we go. There's the runner installer. So we've done that. So what does he say now? So, on the next, so it says, it, all right, so he says it, now it gets a bit weird, to install CBM Studio by installing it. <laughs> okay, right. So we need to go back into that wine tricks. There we go. Select 32-bit apps, click OK. And we're going to run the uninstaller. So, OK. So there's .NET 462 and the gecko that we installed. So now we need to click on install. There we go, download. So we'll double click that. And we'll click next. Next. We'll not create a shortcut. Next. Next. Finish. So we should, in here, but it might not show. Until we go back in. So we'll just do it again. Run on installer. Okay. And there it is. So it's it knows it's installed. So we're going to click cancel then cancel again and now we should have there we go see this help with this wine glass if we click that we should see the cbm online help let's hope come on oh there it is oh there it is right so there should be an icon now in the start menu and there it is there we go i'm going to run it see what happens see if it goes pear-shaped well well look at that and it's installed right let's do some jiggery pokery so I'm gonna set the default users John documents document my documents there we go new folder CBM PRG Studio and say that's our new one and fonts let's put it into what I'm used to which is mode 9 what fonts this one for memory preview right we'll make that 10 like so okay uh, source font make it my trademark font make it big enough so we can see it okay so snap that to the side make that a little bit smaller snap that to the bottom there we go right let's create a new product so create a new product c64 this is gonna be hello world I'm going to put it in there 
no we're not creating a git repository next create right let's go to our forum site let's go back to the home because um, I've got a demo example so assembly stuff assembling code code examples and hello world so select code copy and let's paste it into a new file new file hello world .asm. paste and there's the file so we'll save it now the problem is because we've got Linux because we're running on Linux I've tried, I've failed many, many times to try and get Vice to run, but it doesn't run. But what we can do is we can go build program to file. So we let it go through it. So it's now, there we go. It's going to ask me to, where do I want to save it? So I'm going to put it in there. And then we're going to open it up. Documents, Prog Studio, Hello World. There's the program file. So we're going to open up in terminal and we're going to do x64 hello world dot prg. And there you go. So it's fully working. I don't know why the vice is flashing, but it must be something to do with the virtual machine. Um, let's change the settings, especially the video. CRT, no, Vic. Um, I want it to be. I wonder what vice does. Nah. I want to turn. Ah, there we go, that one. Where's the OK button? Ah, there. Right. Oh, and it's still flashing for some reason. I don't know why. But it's done it. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to load Neptune Lander. And we're going to see if it can compile that. So we're going to go on to GitHub. So we don't need that anymore. We can get rid of that. GitHub.com slash old school coder. Right, Neptune Lander. Download the code as a zip file. Save it. I should have done it yes it did so we'll get rid of that go into downloads extract that to there there it is get rid of the master rename don't want the master rename Gonna cut it from there. Gonna paste it into here. Not there. Here. Right. Let's fire it up again. Let's see if we can load that up. So open existing project. Neptune lander. Neptune lander. Now I'm going to, because it's virtual machine, I'm going to move the virtual machine title out of the way so I can get more space on here because I think some of the dialog boxes will be a bit small. So let me uh, do this. 
There we go. There we go. So it's loaded Neptune Lander in. So let's see. Should we see? Right, let's have a look at the character set. Does it load the character set font editor? And yes, it does. Look at that. Oh, cool, right? So that's that one. Does it load the sprites? Let's have a look. Well, it's certainly loading the sprites up. Oh, okay. Let's close that. This is where we find it has problems, I think. Close. Yeah, there we go. No. Nope. And landscapes. Oh, it's done. It's done the form loader as well. It's a bit slow. It's struggling a little bit. See if it'll swap screens. Oh, I can't because it's down there. Come on, up, move up. Can I close it? Oh, I think it's we're having issues. It can see the back, but it can't see this form. Oh, what a shame! It was so promising. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Let's try this again. Right. Screen editor. Open. Oh, it could be just too big. Right. Let's shut it down. Oh, it says the screen editor's open back up. Oh. Oh, it is. There it is. It's struggling now. Right, let's let's see if we can close this thing down. Quick two windows. Okay. Right. So, we'll close it down. Let's try see if um, it was struggling because of the stuff that was asking it to open so open existing project Neptune lander Neptune lander and see if it will open up the form so right click open Yeah, I think it's a memory. Could be a memory thing. I'll have to see how much memory there's running. See if it'll run through the screens. Screen one, screen two. Come on. Screen three. Yeah, it's done screen three. Screen four. No, oh, that's screen one, isn't it? That's the original one. So, it is loading it up. It's a bit on the slow side, but this is a Windows program running on Linux using Wine. Now, the big thing is, will it build this project? This may take some time. Let's see. Right, so I've told it to start, and away it's going. Oh, has it errored? Ink 
clue binary not found. Lander dot Sid. Oh, okay. Have I am I missing a file? Okay. Um Sid player. Ink Sid player. Is it in there? Yeah. Let's rim that out for the moment because I'm not playing it anyway. So save, go back, build, program, run. No, no, no. Save, innit? Oh, it's doing it now. There's the assembly dump. Okay. So it's going to ask me to save it. And we'll save it. PRG student at Toon Lander. Right, let's see if we run it. So we'll go to that directory. That's the one, so we'll open in terminal. Right, so x64 neptune lander.prg. Come on. Come on. Did it? I bet I've got the name wrong, haven't I? Where's the PRG? Oh, Neptune Lander underscore V2. Let's do that again. So Neptune Lander underscore V2. Come on. Come on. Why aren't you showing? Oh, it's doing a load. Here we go. And it crashed. I wonder if that's because I've, I've disabled the um, Ink Sid player. I wonder if it's because I've disabled the uh, the music set up Sid play I bet that's in the flow it's in flight sprite collision Come on. Set up splash screen. Here we go. JSR scroll. Right. Game screen. So this is the scroll routine. Do we set up? Do we set up the, um, no, it's definitely not there. That 
that's landed safely. That's difficulty. JSR setup SID player. There we go. Let's get rid of that. Save that. Go back to that. Build program to file. Oh, excuse me. Right, so it's done that. I'm going to roll the right that. Looks like it's done it. Right, let's try again. So it's loading it. 16, it got to 13 before. There we go. Right. So it's still flashing, but I think this is to do with the VM, to be honest. But you saw it, it was working. It was working. Right. Okay. Well, there you go. It's taken me, what, just over an hour to get this to where it is. But we have got a f sort of fully functioning CBM Studio in Linux. And it compiles. It does the screens. Admittedly, I've got some big screens here. But it does it. And it's not bad for a first effort. Um, I'm going to, let's see, how much memory are we using? Where's the, uh, uh, where is it? System, here we go. So we've got it running. So we're taking up, right, I've given this virtual machine four gig. So it's only taking up one and a half. So it's not doing too bad. Right. I think that was a successful test. Thanks Raven, or AKA Sean, for doing that. And hopefully some of you guys that are Linux users that have wanted to use Derek's software will try this. And let me know how good, bad or indifferent it is. Um, remember, I'm, help, I'm part of the development team now, so... We can try and hopefully try and do a bit of optimization to allow us to do these sort of things. So with that, I will say, if you like what I do, hit that like button. If you didn't like what I did, fine, hit the dislike button. Always leave me a comment because I try and answer them all. And if you'd like to support the channel, then consider becoming a patron of mine. All the money raised in Patreon is put back into the channel. And with that, I'll say, see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye. I'd like to thank all the patrons that are contributing to my channel. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now. Thank you very much.